In a world where most modern nations were, at one point, either colonized or the colonizer, it seems quite a mystery how some regions remained untouched by this crucial era of the past. And it's especially surprising to find that there were actually some areas in Africa that remained untouched by the Portuguese, British, Spanish, French, Belgian, and Italian colonial powers who swarms the continent with simultaneous goals of expanding their empires. Of the few and far between modern day states that managed to slip out of the imperial intruder's grasp though, Ethiopia stands as one of the most impressive. During the 19th century, multiple colonial powers had realized that Africa served as a good source of natural resources and additional profit. Europeans had actually been in Africa since the 15th century, establishing exploration campaigns and trade posts along the coast. Eventually, each empire also realized that they would likely be competing with their neighboring European powers and therefore needed to make some claims to the lands they wished to utilize. This prompted a period generally referred to as the Scramble for Africa. When the scramble began, Europeans had already reached the continent. Driven by financial and political reasons, the European leaders knew that it would only be a matter of time before war would break out between them if some type of deal was not made as to who would control which parts of the continent. Thirteen European nations met with each other and the United States for the Berlin Conference. The conference began on November 15, 1884 and didn't end until February 26, 1885 and resulted in the subsequent Berlin Act. The region of modern-day Congo that had already been occupied by the Belgians was confirmed to be under Belgian possession. Areas of free trade for all was set up around the Niger and Congo rivers and the Congo Basin and Lake Malawi and it was agreed that any European entity who took land along the African coast would have to inform the other powers of this action. Now, the door was open for any and all of these imperial powers to start taking over the continent. Italy was one of these empires and quickly set its sights on Ethiopia after beginning to establish what would become its Eritrean colony. Moving to expand this colony more, the Italians sent their special corps of Africa into the port town of Massawa, was at the time under the authority of the Ethiopian Empire in 1887. The latter initially sent a warning to the Italian officials that they were in violation of a treaty that had been signed between Ethiopia, known then as Abyssinia, Britain, and Egypt, but the warning was not heeded. Instead, Italy decided to double down and began to prepare for a battle at the Sahati fortification with 167 Italian troops alongside 1,000 locals. The town's governor, Raz Alula Ngida, was not even slightly tolerant of this move and decided to outright attack the fortification and its inhabitants. This risky decision resulted in a tragic number of casualties for the Ethiopians with only a few Italians being injured and none killed. The attacking troops had been no match for the garrison's cannon and rifles and were shortly forced to retreat while some still remained alive. Still, the Italians were now low on ammunition and further felt need for reinforcements, which resulted in about 550 additional troops being sent to the fortification. Thanks to his spies, Raz Alula was given a heads up and quickly gathered a fresh army to march back to the garrison before the reinforcements could arrive. This time,